I, the name that is above every other name. We choose to be careful with our words this morning, Jesus. We acknowledge your holiness, your beauty, your splendor, God, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would bring a revelation of the King this morning that would ruin our lives forever. We're asking, Holy Spirit, that we would see King Jesus as he truly is. This morning, we exalt you. We declare you alone are the one who is worthy of worship. You alone are worthy of affection and adoration. You alone are worthy of this moment together. So we ask, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come this morning in Southern California. As we're in this upper room, we're asking that Jesus would be exalted. That Jesus would be exalted and enthroned upon our praises. We give you glory. We give you glory just all across the room. Begin to lift your voice. Begin to tell Jesus how beautiful he is. How worthy he is. Give him your affection. We step out of our circumstances this morning and declare your goodness. Jesus, we declare that your blood speaks a better word than every situation we face. We declare the power of Jesus, the power of his name, the name above every name. We exalt you this morning, Jesus.
a gatekeeper. I'd rather just be near to you more than anything. I'd rather be a gatekeeper in the house of the Lord than spend a thousand days anywhere else. Because better is one day in your courts. Oh, better is one day. I'd rather be a keeper of your temple than be anywhere else, Jesus. Better, better is one day in your courts than a thousand. Messiah. 
believe there's a revelation that Jesus is bringing this morning. I want to read this story. It stuck out to me as we're worshiping. Stay in this place. It's when Jesus has been crucified. It's Matthew 28. And it's, it's Matthew end of 27. It says, it's the next day after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, remember how that imposter, that imposter said, while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said, you have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. They called him an imposter, a fraud. The Lord said that you can't manufacture a move of God, but religion cannot contain him. The stone of religion that came to seal, set a guard, the fear cannot contain the resurrected king. As we go on, it says a great earthquake came. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came back, rolled away the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow and for fear of him the guards trembled and became like dead men. The angel said, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified but he is not here for he has risen. Come see the place where he lay. You go down a little bit and Jesus appears to them and it says they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Hebrews 13, eight says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The angel said, come and see where he lay. I believe this morning, all of heaven is saying, come and see into this revelation that the tomb is empty and that Jesus is the same today as he was when he burst forth through the grave. He's the same today when he went through the villages and the towns and the cities and healed the sick, raised the dead, cast out demons, cleansed lepers. Jesus is the same risen King today. And he's saying, come and see. So Holy Spirit, this morning, we're asking for our eyes to be open afresh to the resurrection of Jesus. We ask Holy Spirit that we would see afresh the empty tomb that religion tried to keep him in and bury him. And we're asking this morning for a demonstration of the resurrection power of Jesus. God, that you would grip us with the revelation of how great, powerful, mighty, and beautiful King Jesus is. The God who was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, the all-powerful one, the all-powerful one, the all-powerful one, the one who beat death. This morning, ask the Holy Spirit right now for a revelation of an empty tomb and a resurrected King. Begin in your own words to ask him to flood your heart with the revelation that Jesus is a risen King, that death couldn't beat him, that he's the same God today who moves in power. Holy and anointed one, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you.
souls sing out a love song to you. Our hearts cry out, we pour ourselves out at your feet and we ask, Holy Spirit, would you pour out upon us? We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Our souls cry out, we do declare better is one day in this place at your feet than a thousand elsewhere. That a thousand elsewhere, that a thousand elsewhere better is one day with you. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. We have these prayer notes that we're going over, and a lot of my notes were on revival. And I was asking God to just encounter me this morning with a heart for revival. And He just was wrecking me this morning with the heart of the fact that I was lost and I was found, that my soul really does sing the holiness and the consuming fire of God. It's just so crazy that God chose us, that he picked us up out of the mire and the dirt. And that's where revival starts is that awareness that God in his holiness and his consuming fire, he rescued us and we were so lost think about before I knew Jesus how lost I was and just the holiness and the unconditional love of God to find us and that's just the heart of revival the heart of knowing what we were saved from the heart of knowing the holiness of God so Jesus we just pray right now that you would encounter every person with the holiness of who you are the fact that we undeservedly were chosen by you that before the foundations of the earth, Jesus, you chose us. That our blind eyes were open to see you. I thank you, God, that you're an all-consuming fire. That you burn away everything that is not of you, Jesus. We thank you even for Ian last night talking about the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. That you burn that away. That you're burning fire. It's for revival. It's for us to look more like you. Even just thinking about the burning fire, I think of when Moses saw the burning bush, that it was unto him encountering a holy space with God. And I just pray that Circuit Rider community would be a people like the burning bush that would draw people into a holy space to encounter Jesus. That our personal revival would not just affect us, but it would cause us to tell every person we know, Jesus set me free. Jesus is the Holy One. He's the worthy one. We thank you, Jesus, that you are worthy. And just lift up your voice with the worthiness of God, that he set you free, that he chose you. That he unconditionally, without anything that you could do, just picked you up. That he opened your eyes. That he does miracles, that he heals, that he uses imperfect people. We thank you, Jesus, that you use imperfect people. We thank you, Jesus. my heart is the wick, your love is the flame, and I want to burn for your name. If my heart is the wick, your love is the flame, 
can get with just one person or two people around you. And we're just going to pray because the fire of God, yes, it's the love of Jesus, but it also purifies us to a place where we are new and we are walking. And I'm just going to sing this really simple prayer over us. And we're asking, even in response from last night, Monday night, we're asking the fire of God afresh. So let's pray, let's pray, God, release your fire over our lives. Release the fire of purity, the fire of your love in Jesus' name. And speak to me with the fire in your eyes and all within me dies. And I on this for a second. I want to read this. William Booth wrote this. He said, Thou Christ of burning, cleansing flame, send the fire. Thy blood-bought gift today we claim, send the fire. Look down and see this waiting host. Give us the promised Holy Ghost. We want another Pentecost. Send the fire. Holy Spirit, we're asking. We're asking for the fire of revival to mark our hearts this morning. We're asking for Jesus, you are true revival. Jesus, you are true revival. We're asking for the fire of the Spirit to descend this morning. Mark our hearts. Come on, circuit riders, don't get quiet with me right now. Don't get quiet with me right now. Press in, press in, press in. Holy Spirit, send the revival fire. We say no to passionless Christianity. We say no to boring Christianity. 
We're asking for the fire from heaven to fall on our hearts this morning. Come on, you can pray a little louder. I've heard you pray, circuit riders. Keep pressing in. Jesus, send the fire. Jesus, send the fire. Jesus, send the fire. We're asking for revival. We're asking for revival, Jesus, this morning. Come, Holy Spirit. Come with the power of Pentecost. Unleash the fire. Unleash the fire. Send the fire, Jesus. Just begin to pray in the spirit all across the room. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Jesus. Send the fire. It's not.
Just begin to prophesy salvation, healing, families being restored. Just begin to speak it out. In Southern California, salvation springing up from the ground. Healing break out in Jesus' name. Cities be awakened in Jesus' name. We prophesy to the streets of America. Salvation, salvation, salvation. Revival in the streets in Jesus' name. We will follow you, Jesus. We will follow you, Jesus, the God of revival. We will follow you to the streets. In Jesus' name, we will follow your burning heart, Jesus. Yeah, I keep keep hearing a phrase over and over again. I keep hearing dead things are rising. Dead things are rising today. If we know the story in John 11, this is when Lazarus had died and Jesus had come afterward. And Martha came to Jesus. He's saying, it's okay if you had only been here. Jesus, if you had only come earlier, my brother would have not died. But I keep hearing the phrase over and over again, dead things, they're rising today. And Jesus said to Martha, notice see, she was confused. She was waiting that revival or resurrection would come on a day. But Jesus says in John 11, 25, and the resurrection and the life. See, revival is not a day. Revival is a man and it's through Jesus Christ. And Jesus saying, this will be the generation that changes everything because they'll see the man Jesus. They'll see Jesus high and lifted up. Today is a day where we can go after Jesus, where we can say he's worthy, where we can say, if you are lifted up, Jesus, an entire generation will see you, God. An entire generation will come to life. Can we cry out to God that our generation would come from death to life, death to life right now, God. We cry out, God. We say this is the day, God, where the day dead things will live, dead things will live, dead things will live, God. We cry out to you, God. We say that you're worthy, God. We say you're worthy. We say you're worthy. We lift you up, God. We worship your name, God. We worship your name, God. We thank you, God. You are revival, Jesus. You are revival, God. You are resurrection, God. You are life, God. We praise you, oh God. We lift you up, oh God. We say you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Thank you, Jesus. You're revival, God.
David Brainerd, the great missionary, said this, Oh, that I might be a flaming fire in the service of the Lord. Here I am, Lord, send me. Send me to the ends of the earth. Jesus, we're asking that we would be lit on fire with the revival heart of Jesus, that a generation would have no more arguments because they would see an expression of Christianity that would restore families, that addictions would be broken, that sickness would be healed, that salvation would be possible. We're asking Holy Spirit for a Book of Acts movement in our generation, that the power of God would be put on display. And we ask that you would start with us Start with us in this room, in this place. Mark our hearts with the man of revival. If that's your heart cry, just lift your hands and say, here am I, send me. Lift your hands, say, I will be the one who says so. I will be the one who declares and prophesies to the streets of America that Jesus is moving, that Jesus is coming. Holy Spirit, mark hearts, mark hearts, give callings, send the fire. We thank you that your gospel is the power to save. We thank you for the gospel. That's the power of salvation. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving in our generation. We bless you this morning. We give you honor 
and glory and declare you alone will get the credit, Jesus, for every breakthrough, every salvation, every family restored. We declare it's only by you, Jesus. Continue to mark our hearts with revival in Jesus' name. Be blessed this morning. So fun being together. We'll be back here tomorrow morning. Amen.